is this uh, we can is this uh, session can be recorded? Yeah, so I just turn on the recording. Uh, so after this, I will send you the recording as well. And if there is needed for another session, um, I'll be more happy to do it. Maybe because I think a lot of doctors are busy with the booster and a lot of you know, people coming up for their checkups. So I understand that everyone's a little bit busy. No yeah, you can um, look back at the recording and, you know, when they have yeah. the free time. Yeah. No, please. So um, if you're all right, then I can uh, start off first. Or, uh, would you want to wait a bit longer? I think. Uh, um, no, I think we can. Yeah, we can start. OK, OK, great. Yeah. So um, I believe you can see my presentation, right? Yes, yes. All right. Very so. So. All right, so welcome everyone to um, today's talk about the uh, primary screening for cervical cancer prevention. Thank you, Dr. Azra and Nadia, for inviting me for this talk. And I believe um, I understand that uh, you're busy. So thank you for taking your time out today to listen to this. For sure, um, I will present to you guys uh, Evelyn Brush, which is uh, one of the services that care clinics will be offering. And um, if you have any questions at any time, you can just uh, turn on your mic and ask any question at any time. I'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, of course, I'll try my best to share with you as much accurate information. However, um, I believe that you all as medical professionals have a lot of knowledge as well. So uh, do share if you have uh, anything that you wanted to say. All right. So a few more people joining us. Great. So I will eat presentation. So actually, um, just to share a bit for maybe some people who are not really familiar about HPV. So um, HPV is actually a virus that causes cervical cancer. So about 99% of cervical cancer is actually caused by this virus, this sexually transmitted virus. So um, for cervical cancer, that 1% is more of a hereditary case or whether it's being transmitted, uh, cancer that is uh, being spread from other, other parts of their body, there's also a possibility of that. Of course, the majority of cervical cancer is being caused by HPV. So uh, just to share with you all that HPV, there is a high risk and there is low risk HPV because uh, HPV is actually a group of viruses. So um, there's over like a hundred, more than hundred types of HPV and they can occur whether it's on your elbow, any skin area, it can be on your vaginal area, your labia, your, your mouth, you can kind also, or your elbows or your hands, you can kind of um, the infection anywhere. So the thing about HPV is, is that there are no uh, symptoms. There's actually no symptoms uh, when uh, people are infected with HPV. In fact, Almost uh, about 80%, they did a survey, about 80% of the population would have, of uh, sexually active people would have gotten HPV at some point of time. La. Even though you have the same partner for like maybe five years like that, um, there is still a risk of contracting HPV because it's a skin-to-skin -skin contact transmission. So for um, HPV, uh, where it turns into cervical cancer is when HPV infections do not clear off. Of course, there is no cure for HPV infections. In fact, it's just about boosting your immune system in order for your body to clear off the HPV virus itself. So for uh, uh, when the HPV infection becomes persistent, that turns into cervical cancer. So um, of course, because 99% is caused by uh, HPV and we just need to perform more screening, uh, cervical cancer is actually a very preventable uh, issue. So in fact, a lot of people may think like, oh, they're having like a little bit of like bleeding in their discharge or a bit of a pelvic pain. And these are symptoms that are more related towards cervical cancer itself. That means they are very um, progressed. They are, they are progressed into the cancer and that's where the symptoms come up. Whereas for HPV infections, there are no symptoms. Okay. So... Maybe I'll share with you also about Malaysia and why this is relevant to GP clinics is because um, actually this test 
Well, it's done once every five years, which is less than a pap, uh, which is less often than a pap smear. But in fact, uh, pap smear screening is actually uh, very low. There's a very low amount of people in Malaysia that are doing their screening in Malaysia for pap smear. In fact, uh, based on the LPPKS survey, only about two out of five urban women have gone for their pap smear which is actually um, ever gone before, not within the last three years or the last uh, five years, it's actually ever gone before. So most of the women actually do it after their pregnancy that one time. And then um, some, I have actually heard from some OBGYNs that uh, in fact, some patients after their first pregnancy, they don't even want to go back. Uh, after their second or third pregnancy, they don't want to go back for the pap smear. They totally ignore it. So in the urban area, uh, because we are in the urban area, all our population is uh, a little bit more well to do. So uh, most of the time, they are being uh, they they will do the screening on themselves, or the cost is incurred on themselves, or they will go to the KK and do it. So actually, only two out of five women in the urban area has done it. Whereas government has been focusing a lot on the rural areas. So actually, the rural areas are performing better than the urban areas, which is a little bit of a shock for us. So I believe that um, there's a lot of uh, untapped market over here as well as uh, women should be screened more regularly in order for us to protect uh, each other. So um, why it's only once every five years is because you can see over here the in from the point of infection in a normal cervix when they get uh, infected for HPV to they gonna the, the full bone cervical cancer it's about 10 years. So if it's five years, then you will capture uh, spaces in between. Uh, whether if this is 10 years, then they can, if this, and this is five years, then they definitely can capture, they can capture the uh, infection in time because uh, it's actually a very slow progressive uh, cancer. So uh, five years is actually sufficient. So uh, it may be lower, uh, lower amount of burden on patients to do screening. However, uh, the profitability for you is actually very good. So uh, it will be quite a good opportunity, especially for maybe if women are a bit afraid of doing it with uh, male doctors or maybe it takes out a lot of time or maybe no confidence, then uh, this is something that you can offer in place. So um, why uh, we are offering uh, this uh, screening method, which is a self-sampling method. So this is the Evelyn brush that's a uh, that we are offering here, which is a self-sampling method. So basically, patients can perform this screening themselves. So what screening they are doing is they are screening for HPV. So this is in line with our government regulation right now. Uh, government's actually pushing a lot on uh, primary screening for cervical cancer using HPV testing. So uh, the HPV test is actually sent to the lab. It's a PCR test, same like COVID. So um, the reliability of the results is actually uh, very good. Yeah, so um, with uh, this uh, high, uh, HPV testing, normally we do just high-risk testing to see whether as high-risk is other one that are at risk to convert into cervical cancer. So uh, this is what the testing that we are doing uh, using the Evelyn brush. So we will provide this uh, sampling method for you to try. And uh, this is something that you can perform in your clinic and offer to your patients. Uh. So I can show you the brush uh, now. Uh, so this is the packaging of the Evelyn brush. You can see over here. So it's a sterile pack item and it's a single use item. Why this brush is, uh, this brush actually is uh, manufactured in Netherlands. Um, for those of you who know the Cervex brush, which is the brush that's like, like this, that they use for a pap smear. They are actually the inventors of the Cervex brush as well. So they actually developed this uh, self-sampling method, which is uh, ideal uh, and the gold standard in the market for HPV self-sampling. So I will open the packaging. You just peel it open like this. And then this is how the brush looks like. Oh. So um, I can talk a bit about the features and why it will give your patients confidence compared to other options in the market. So um, a lot of women will look at this and then they will find that it's, oh, it looks very big and very painful to uh, insert. But actually, in fact, this is just a cap. Uh. So over, see, over here, you can see this is the cap, the, the body, and then this is a, a spinning plunger. So what will happen is that uh, you can open the cap, 
which is over here like this. And uh, you'll be able to see the inside of the brush. So what, what, what is actually going into the woman's uh, vagina is actually this area. And these are the wings that will, make, will define the insertion line. So that uh, the distance that you put in essentially is the is a fixed length and they do not need to guess how deep they're going in whether is it uh, normally it's about 5 cm but uh, they don't want to you know leave it up to interpretation so they have done this uh this wing so these wings will stop at the vagina area uh, and then um so as you can see on the left side there's the white brush so this brush is actually a patented technology that uh, traps all of the vagina, cervical vagina samples. So you're actually trapping the um, like uh, the the vaginal uh, liquid, like a uh, specimen, the discharge the uh, amount, and trapping it into these thin, fine fibers. So actually, these are very soft. It's actually uh, quite uh, painless. It's a painless method. In fact, I've tried it myself, and we have done it in the office uh, with over hundred women before we launched this product. And they most of them said that they couldn't even feel it. So why you couldn't even feel it is because there is no thing sticking out the side that may cause any abrasion. So in fact, when you insert this, so what happens is you will insert this into the vagina and they will push up, they will push the plunger up. They will push it like this. Yeah, so what, what it looks like is like this. And then uh, what they will do is that they will rotate. I'm not sure if you will be able to hear, but um, basically the plunger standardize the rotation as well to not make sure, leave it up to interpretation as well that, oh, maybe I rotated five times, but actually it's not. I only rotated 180 degrees instead of 360. Each rotation, you can hear a click. I'm not sure if you can hear that. It's like you will have this sound. Yeah. So each time you turn, after you put it inside, you push the plunger up and you turn five times. Two, three, four, five. You take it out of the vagina and you and you uh, pull it back out and you tap it. So it's actually very simple to use and that's why it's uh, designed for self-sampling. Uh, most of our customers, what they do is that they allow patients to do it in the, they, they show them a video that we have a video that's played uh, in all three languages. And uh, this is, uh, they will just let them be in a room and then they'll play the video for them and then they can do it themselves while they are uh, talking to other patients or seeing the next patient. So one thing that's very easy is because that everything is built into this one device. It's a sampling device that we call it. It's uh, painless and it looks uh, very feminine as well as it's a very standardized sampling. So this is the gold standard in the market. We actually have uh, lots and lots of papers that our manufacturer have done that uh, covers uh, all over the world from Malaysia to China to Japan to Netherlands, Italy, Africa, everywhere in the world they have performed this. So this is the most widely tested uh, self-sampling method for HPV and all the results have come up very good. Uh, in fact, the sample adequacy is 99.7%, which is uh, the 0.3% is when women are afraid to put it in. Uh. So um, this is a this is a this is a this is a method for us to you know offer your patients that is easy to perform and uh, is uh, not so difficult. Huh? So we will provide these instructions as well as well as a, a video link later. I can show you the video. Uh, uh, share. Let me share with you the video to watch. Uh, here. Yeah. Come here. Wash your hands before usage. Remove the Evelyn brush from the packaging. Do not throw the packaging away, as it is necessary for sending the Evelyn brush to the laboratory after usage. Press the sides of the pink cap with your thumb and index finger 
to remove the pink cap from the Evelyn brush. Ensure that you do not touch the white fibers of the Evelyn brush with your hands. Obtain the sample whilst in a standing position. Assume a comfortable stance, for example, as if you were about to insert a tampon. Spread your labia with one hand and with the other, insert the Evelyn brush into your vagina until the wings touch your labia. Hold the transparent casing with one hand and with your other hand, push the pink plunger in the direction of the transparent casing. You will hear and feel a click when the brush is in the right position with the pink plunger directly against the casing. Turn the pink plunger five rotations in the same direction. After each rotation, you will hear a click. This helps you count the rotations. After turning the plunger five times, carefully remove the Evelyn brush. Hold the transparent casing with one hand and with your other hand, pull on the pink plunger until the white brush disappears into the casing. When doing so, do not touch the top part of the Evelyn brush above the wings. Hold the transparent end to ensure the white brush does not extend again. Place the pink cap back on the Evelyn brush using your thumb and index finger. You will hear a click when it is properly in place. Put the Evelyn brush back inside the packaging. Place the packaging containing the Evelyn brush into the plastic bag provided and seal it. Use the return envelope to send the plastic bag containing the Evelyn brush together with the signed declaration of consent and the completed questionnaire. All right, so you saw the video. We actually uh, have that translated in uh, English, BM and Chinese as well for depending on your patients, lah, which one uh, they require. All right, so let's go back to the slideshow. Yeah. So like I said just now that we have a lot of uh, data. Uh, we have a lot of data research that's uh, that is available and it's a uh, uh, you can Google it as well as I can send it to you. No problem if uh, you have any questions with regards to the item. So one thing I wanted to share as well is that uh, this item, uh, this Evelyn brush is actually listed in the guideline for Malaysia CPG guideline for uh, primary HPV testing, cervical cancer screening, and um, it is actually stable in room temperature. So you do not need to keep it in the fridge. It's actually stable for up to 32 weeks, huh? but I do not recommend for you to uh I do not recommend for you to hold it for for 32 weeks. Like uh, it's a bit long, lah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Things. Things. Oh, yeah. Okay. So um. Over here, you can see that there are quite a few people that are like, oh, you know, they, they perform vaccinations and then they are uninterested to screen. But actually, there's a lot of risk involved with uh, screening, uh, not screening, even though just relying on the vaccine, because only about two or three, especially the ones that the government run, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is like not the Gardasil 9, but rather the ones that only cover two to three of the most common uh, uh, strains of HPV. Uh, however, uh, why we always say that uh, HPV DNA test is more sensitive than pap smears because uh, while pap smear is only looking for cervical uh, cancer cells, HPV DNA actually catch the infection before it turns into cervical cancer. So um, that is a earlier uh, earlier detection able to give you a close follow up with your patient in order to make sure that it, it doesn't uh, convert into spike cancer. And if it does, you can straight away uh, catch it at the very early stage and there's a better prognosis for their overall uh, health. So um, we actually tested this uh, in like over 180,000 people around the world and everyone has been uh, uh, adequate and they feel very comfortable using the Evelyn brush has no issue. So uh, some people who say do not test Sometimes, uh, actually our manufacturer has done the study saying that uh, they found out that people who are unwilling to test, about 55% of them actually uh, had cancer when they finally were, were interested in doing the, doing the screening. So, um, like I said before, it's actually stable for 32 weeks. 
in room temperature, but I don't recommend you to keep it for 32 weeks. Uh, however, for this, uh, it is a, uh, it is a, uh, what do you call this? Uh, you can just uh, keep it and send it to the lab uh, whenever you want. Uh, of course, the lab will only run the sample every uh, Wednesday. Some labs run it every two weeks. But uh, the lab that we are using right now only runs it every Wednesday, so your patient will take some time to to get the result. So most probably, uh, it's up to you. However, you want to perform it, but uh, perhaps you can just send them the results, and if it's positive, only you call them back in to the to the to your clinic, right? So so. Um, how does this help you? It's actually, it's very short time to do pro the procedure. It's actually less than five minutes. Even if your patients are a bit afraid of performing the test, you can also do perform it for them while they are lying down, and then they just put uh, you just put one leg up. Do not need a speculum at all. So a lot of women are actually afraid of the speculum as well as like you know, um, exposing themselves to the doctor. They are able to do it themselves in the in the in the room. You just give them a designated room lah. So it's actually quite simple to do. You just push it in, you turn five times, you pull it out, and then you put it back into the same packaging. So um, because uh, because this uh, this testing uh, is actually not so expensive towards doctors, so there is a high profitability in the market. Uh, right now, most uh, we actually recommend doctors to sell about 250 ringgit for the service to the patient, but it's actually quite low cost uh, for the brush as well as the test. Um, this is also attract patients. So those of you that actually perform pap smear in your clinic, don't worry about it be, uh, affecting your business because this is more to capture patients who do not even come in to do the testing. So these are people who do not even want to or care to do the pap smear. This is where um, this evening brush come in. So you'll be able to capture more of these people to come in. And then because the positivity rate is about 10% or less, those people, you are able to follow up closely with them. Let's say if they are positive for HPV, you can test them every single year to make sure that it doesn't uh, convert into cervical cancer and it retain more of uh, the profits in-house rather than, you know, when they progress into, you know, stage 3, stage 4 like cancer, they're definitely going to have to go to a hospital, which is different. Law. So as a primary care clinic, you are able to uh, help the community to reduce the uh, risk of a uh, making it a very late stage cervical cancer you can catch it earlier and also um, it's uh, helpful for you to retain to to bring in more patients who are interested in uh, doing this then you can provide a consultation uh, to tell them about like HPV what is it doing and why is it important to get screened all right so um, it's very simple to perform that's why uh, self-sampling is uh, a very good option for you all and um, we also have to provide a lot of support. So like, let's say um, uh, we can do like publicity for you all on our social media platforms because uh, we are just on our social media, we are just uh, putting out education towards uh, cervical cancer and HPV and why you need to get screened. So we put out a lot of education about uh, information as well as to share or uh, where can they get these uh, services. So we do share our clinic, uh, our clinic partners as well. Like recently, Care Clinic uh, uh, Instagram did post, and then we will reshare so that you can reach a wider market. So we can also provide you with uh, many many uh, marketing materials that you will need, oh, like poster, flyer, brochure in your clinic. We also have that available. All right. So uh, this is how a test looks like in case uh, you all have not seen it before for those of you who do not perform HPV uh, screening. So what I will show is because uh, 16 and 18 account for about 70% of uh, HPV infections that cause uh, cervical cancer. So 16 and 18 is the one that you want to see whether it's a 16 or 18. Uh, whereas for the other, uh, other 14 other high risk, they actually place it in a group. Lah. So it's a lower risk of them to to convert it into cervical cancer, but it's still, uh, there is still a risk. No? So the only thing that you need to see is that um, the comment which says whether the sample is satisfactory or not. So far, we have not had any issue with this, but this is just something to take note of. So if it's detected, then they just put the word here, detected in the middle. Lah. All right, so. Um, 
yeah, so early detection is definitely the best prevention for you, uh, for women. So um, this is just uh, my short presentation that I wanted to share with you all. Um, is there any questions uh, you would like to ask regarding the Evelyn brush? Uh, hello, uh, Puyi. Hi, yeah. can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you, Dr. Zira. Yeah. Hi, uh, thank you. Thank you so much Yui, for the very insightful uh, presentation just now. Um, I got a few um, questions over here. Uh, I think, um, do you mind if um, you can share uh, with the rest of the participant here? Yep. Um, this Evelyn brush, can we, sh um, can the uh, women uh, use this during um, menses or menstru menstruation period? Uh -huh. Yeah, so um, as uh, we provide this instruction later as well. So over here, you will actually state that you are not uh, should not perform it when you're having a uh, menstruation, as well as uh, you should not perform it during menstruation if uh, you are pregnant or three months after your pregnancy. And uh, if you have uh, used like certain vaginal products, of course, uh, like loop and condoms are fine that it will not have any interference. However, some uh, oil-based uh, lubricants may cause some issues with that. Lah. But of course, uh, during menstruation, we do not uh, recommend uh, because uh, the blood will cause an interference with the PCR test. Lah. So after your menstruation is completed, yes. Uh, so um, uh, not during um, uh, yeah, test, during. not for the pregnant lady. Um, yeah. What about... Um, uh, uh, sexual uh, intercourse, I mean, uh, after sex, can uh, you yeah. know, do you have to refrain from sex? Uh, no, no refrainment is needed because uh, actually, in fact, the if like, let's say they had in sexual intercourse with someone that was HPV positive and then they came to do the screening, you'll be able to find out already. So uh, there is no refrainment needed from uh, uh, upon sexual intercourse, of course, uh, maybe not immediately after like I probably they had sexual intercourse and then five minutes later they do this, then um, I'm not sure that that will be as accurate, but uh, definitely there is no reframing needed. All right. Um, another one, you 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 mentioned that it uh, that this is one dry um, uh, specimen. Yes. yes. Dry sampling. Yeah. So you don't really need to, uh, you know, when the patient gave it to us at the clinic, we don't need to keep this sample in the fridge, correct or not? We don't need to put in the fridge, right? Uh, hello? Can you hear me? Uh, sorry, Doctor, I think there is some internet connection. Yeah, I, I think that the, her screen is... Uh, uh, no worry, I will, I will just tell Puyi to reconnect back. Huh? Wait for a moment, huh, Doctor. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Hi, sorry. Hi, so sorry. 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 Um, it's not, I think there's some interference. Yeah, internet. Internet problem. Yeah, my internet. Okay. Um, yeah, internet uh, let me continue with yeah. my question. You say it's stable, um, I think 33, 32 weeks. Uh, don't yes. have to put in it. Yeah, it's a dry sampling. Let's say um, during at the, at the, at the clinic, um, if let's say we accidentally or the staff accidentally put um, this sample in the fridge, would that be mm. okay? So uh, yeah, there's no problem uh, even if they put it in the fridge, it's uh, no problem for that. However, we just recommend you to put it in room temperature to to uh, ensure that there's no issues with the results uh, because uh, it's stored in room temperature. However, you can store it in the fridge as well. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. However, we do not so recommend. No problem. So there's no Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, so, another thing, yeah. uh, you mentioned that the, the, the lab only run this test, the PCR test, the HPV test, only every yeah. Wednesday, once a week. It's a yeah. weekly test. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. it, which lab is that? Is it Pantai? Yeah, so for Pantai, they run it uh, once a week. And then for uh, Sunway, I believe they run it twice a week. Uh, so a, few, a few labs. Uh, um, so we'll get more information regarding the lab side of uh, what your options are. However, uh, currently Pantai, they run it every Wednesday for the result. So the result normally come out on Thursday. Uh, the result only can get the next day, is it? Mm, yeah, so about maybe uh, 
the results will come out either Wednesday night or Thursday. Uh, they will get it to you. Oh, OK. All right, then um, that's good to know. Then we can sort of time our, you know, yes. so the, the patient, they, they, you know, they want to, to know the result as soon as possible. If they say turn around time, it's like turn around, the, I mean, the lab result will come back, you know, yes. five working days, then if it's too a bit delayed, then it'll be a bit problem. So we can definitely, you know, yeah, yeah, definitely that is an issue. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing, uh, because we already received the uh, Gakini only received yeah, the, the first uh, lots of the, the shipment. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the yes. So um, some of the clinic, they already uh, stock up to the item. That's so uh, is it possible because we want to do the the uh, sort of the promotion, uh, you know, to, you know, the increase awareness at the clinic level. Um, uh, is it possible if you can send the, you know, the leaflets and um, and uh, whatever the information leaflets, posters. Uh, we got the posters, but I, uh, I think yeah. um, I, I, I prefer uh, the pamphlets. The two uh, yeah. pamphlets, right? Yeah. So the the one on uh, too embarrassed to get a pap yeah. smear is the uh, is the leaflets that you can place in the clinics. Yeah. Yeah. So this will be what will be provided is the Evelyn brush. This is the instruction on how to use it. A, a, a sample bag. So after after you after they perform the sampling already, they put it back into this casing, and then they just uh, put it into the bag, and you uh, include your whatever patient form in the bag, and then you just uh, there is a there is a sticker seal over here for you to take down. So uh, that's all that's needed lah. Uh, we do provide the brochures. However, if you need uh, other things, uh, we can further discuss this. Uh, when needed, uh, what kind of marketing materials we can help to provide, lah. Mm. Yeah, um, I think uh, I, I I don't know that day uh, when you send the uh the stock to SU, did you send the the leaflet the brochures? Yeah, yeah, I sent the leaflet as well. Yeah. Uh, I think we didn't get it. I been mean, I think um I need to uh ask back. Did, 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 two or, or how many uh, uh, leaflet? I think oh. we don't receive uh, the leaflet is not with the item. We just received the brush and also uh, three three yeah. poster, three pieces of poster in which two are uh, two I have given to Clinic of Science Jaya and the other one for uh, Emerald Avenue and the other I only have one which I keep in HQ, but we don't receive any leaflet. You know the there is a in that bag there is a one set of leaflet that looks like this, and then there's the other one. Yeah. Yeah, there's another one. I can take a picture and send it to you later. So that one, uh, we can arrange the problem now. Mm. Sorry, we got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, so okay. those are the, yeah, those are the brochures that you'll be able to, leaflets that you'll be able to put at the front of their clinic. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, so please uh, send more of the leaflets, you know, the two ah, types, right? Okay. Uh, one is that one, the instruction, and the other one, uh, why the embarrassment, or the embarrassment? Yeah, yeah, that one is to put at the front, whereas the instruction actually uh, comes together with when they do the patient testing. Lah. So, um, I, I think, uh, Miss Nadia, we, we didn't receive it. As I think you need to check and then whether they send back. Okay, yeah, yeah, we will check on that, no problem. Uh, okay, so, another, th another thing I would like to request is possible the bunting, you know? Oh, ah, yes. Yeah, it's uh, good, but Bunting is just like, you know, a bit bigger and then you can put right in front of the door inside the clinic. Uh, so it's more yeah. visible. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I will need to talk to my marketing about it and see uh, what they can come out la, for the bunting as well as, uh, 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 yeah, we will have to we will have to design a bunting for you all, but no problem. Uh, we'll be able to design the bunting, yeah. Okay, good. Just let us know. You can, okay. you know, you can get yeah. it. I understand a lot of people uh, like bunting as well, so that's something that we can provide. Okay, it's more visible, it's big. Yes, know? yes, that's right, oh, that's right. Yeah, um, another thing, I think this is the last one. I think, oh, uh, no worries. <laughs> just, just now there's a CPG, the primary yeah. uh, prevention. Um, yes. It's possible, could you share uh, with us? Or you can WhatsApp to me or email me, is it, is it okay? Yeah, yeah. The, I can the, share with you the CPG. Yeah. yeah, so the main point about the CPG is that uh, they inform that when they uh, HPV testing is a uh, high risk is sufficient, only testing high risk is sufficient, doing it once every five years, and then upon positive, 
a positive HPV sample, you will need to perform, ask the patient to perform a pap smear to see whether have they progressed into cervical cancer or if they do not have the cancer yet. So from there, uh, if they are negative for the pap smear but positive for HPV, then you need to do a, a yearly follow-up on the HPV infection as well as the pap smear every year to make sure that, you know, you uh, catch it quite early. Mm. Alright, okay. Um, if you don't mind, you can share with yeah. me, please. All right, thank I'll you so much. You, thank right? you so much yeah. uh, for the, the information for sharing with yeah. us. Um, I, I don't know if anybody else has any question want to ask uh, Ms. Pu uh, yeah. Pui here. So, I saw Sharifa in the chat um, has mentioned that uh, she asked if it is it really accurate if they do it at home. So uh, because this device has been actually designed for home testing, in fact, in fact, the Dutch screening program is actually performing it. Uh, they are sending it to the patients at home, as well as uh, uh, one of our partners, Doctor on Call, which is an online doctor. They also do send. We also do send it to patients, and then they send it to the lab. And so far, there's been no issue of uh, uh, that. There is no uh, 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 cervical sample, cervical vaginal sample present. There's been no issue of that at all. In fact, this is the highest amount of uh, cervical cervical vagina sample that can be collected through using a brush. So there is a, that's why the this patented technology ensures that there is no issue, even though like maybe they didn't insert it deep enough or they, they were a bit afraid or they didn't turn it enough rounds, they're still able to collect quite a good amount of sample in order for them to do perform the testing. Lah. Okay. Uh, she also asked that, uh, do they need to see a doctor before they do the self-test? Um, it is not necessary for you to see a doctor because this is a screening. So it's like you can go in to do a blood test, but then the result come out, you don't really know how to interpret. Lah. So it's just that doctor needs to explain what does this mean, what does a positive result mean, and what does a negative result mean for patients. All right. So um, that is the two questions for Sharifa. Well, however, does anyone else has any question regarding the healing part or like how to use it or is it a bit difficult? Anything? Uh, feel free to ask. No problem. Uh, you can all just uh, turn on your mic if you guys want to talk. Uh, hello, good afternoon. Yeah, I'm uh, Shubna here. Mm. Okay, I'd like to ask a question because uh, in uh, uh, cases like we do uh, pap smear, uh, we usually tell the patient to come, you know, uh, 10 to 14 days prior to the next period, you see, to come for the pap smear. So in this case, uh, is there any advice for the patients to come for the, you know, or so they can take away that uh, set in what, you know, is it? How do we advise them? Um, for for the purpose of Evelyn Brush, as long as they are not, uh, and HPV sampling as well, as long as they are not uh, bleeding, they are not menstruating, then it's fine already. That is uh, more than sufficient to check. Yeah. So they do not need to be like, like directly like, oh, 14, 15 days after, or, you know, the, the, the space gap. Because I understand that you guys want to see the, the cervix at that condition, so yes. uh, it's a bit different. But because uh, you're not visualizing the cervix, so um, they are just doing a, a collection of sample. It's not required because we're just collecting the, the what do you call it, the, the retinal, the liquid. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. No worries. Thank you, Mitchell Shopner, for asking the question. Uh, are there any other questions about the urine brush? Or maybe about um, HPV testing. Perhaps, uh, yeah, because uh, maybe uh, some people might be thinking how they're going to offer this. And essentially, this will be, like I said, it's targeting, targeting a different segment of people. Of course, it's the best thing if they, you perform a pap smear and you send a sample to do a HPV DNA also. That is a, that is a available test. Of course, it's a little bit more expensive than normal pap smear, but it's a lot more protection. Lah. But those, a lot of people really do not uh, do sampling for uh, HPV, uh, uh, do not do even going for their pap smear. So that's what we are trying to capture. Lah. So even personally speaking, before doing this, I've never been for a pap smear. Only after like learning about and uh, working here that I do a pap smear and I, all my 
people, peers and friends around me have not done a pap smear actually before ever. So um, maybe if uh, anyone else wants to ask any questions regarding HPV or maybe want to just to say something, well, we're more than happy to open the floor to you So. Uh, Hi, again. So, um, so, um, because we, uh, is it possible that you can put uh, uh, our care clinic group in your website because we already yes. we, yeah, have these things there. Yeah, we already ordered. Yeah. So, uh, we will do a promotional next week. Uh, we will. They are scheduled for. They are scheduled for. Uh, they are scheduled to do a posting as well as putting on the website as well as like a social media post together with care clinic next week so uh, so far i understand that there are uh, two two locations particularly that i know that are uh, have already stocked up the evening brush however if there are other locations that are uh, stocking up feel free to let us know then we can also put that in a posting oh you can go to this clinic you can go to this clinic this clinic uh, to get this uh, test test method so, of course, uh, January is also a uh, Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. So, there's a lot of promotional uh, events that are going on currently that maybe you can uh, hop on it as well. Uh, because uh, so, um, screening, normally January is a good time for everyone to start screening. Yeah. And any other burning questions or maybe any confusion or do you want me to cover back anything that uh, maybe I have missed or maybe uh, you all have missed when you guys are not uh, when you guys are maybe locked off or something like that. Uh, hello. Hi, hi Sharifa. Hi. Are you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you Shafira. Mm. I just want to ask you, did you need to speak? A doctor before you do a self-test of Yeah, so um, as mentioned, they don't. You don't need to uh, visit a doctor to do the test actually, because it's just a screening. However, post uh, after completing the test, uh, is uh, better to see a doctor lah. For the government program, actually, what they do is they just um, ask people to go to the KK and do it and then uh, they will WhatsApp them after that to say they're positive or negative and that's all. If they're positive, only the doctor will call up and then talk to them. Uh, that is also an option for you all if you are doing more remote uh, remote treatments. However, uh, I do recommend that especially in a positive case that you have a consultation follow-up with the patient. Okay, um, I just want to ask, did the I believe that it's really a spirit compared uh, to the doctor. Uh, sorry, I couldn't quite hear your question. Is, there, uh, is it the admin right? It's really a spirit compared to the doctor. Uh, as in, are you, uh, let me get a question right. Is it uh, any difference of patient doing it themselves than with doctor? Is that the uh, question? Is it a spirit, the result? Compare with a doctor. Uh, so, sorry, I yeah, I cannot really hear the sound. Maybe if you can type it in the chat, then I can uh, I can answer you okay. from here. Uh, do you hear me now? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, clearly. Okay, I just want to ask you: Is it the Evelyn brush? Is really accurate compared if we see a doctor? Yeah. So um. Seeing a doctor or not is actually there is the no difference because uh, there's actually a lot of uh what do you call this data as well as the research papers that I'll be able to share I can share with you that comparing a uh, self testing compared uh, with a clinic clin clinic uh clinic clinician collected sample basically that means a doctor com a doctor collected compared to a self patient collected because of this uh, device as well as the design parameters that make it uh standardize the sampling so there is no difference in fact uh, uh there's no difference uh in the sensitivity and the quality of the result in fact every single uh test that we have performed so far together with our partners as well as uh clinics there's been no like a negative uh like negative, a negative yeah negative detection of uh, cervical cells yeah. 
um, yeah, in the government side, they have mentioned that some patients, um, if they, they they don't really want to, they just take this, uh, they take the brush, I mean, not the particularly our brush, but they take the brush and then they put it underwater and then they, they send you the, the sample. But I think that would be, that wouldn't make sense because they are paying customer for you. Lah. It's a bit different. Oh, okay, thank you so much for your answer. Oh, no worries, no worries. Um, happy to answer any question. Because I do understand that a lot of people will be like, maybe they want to, you know, uh, have the doctor perform it. There's also no problem. You can also perform this for the patient because uh, they, you don't need the speculum. You just you just ask them to lift up their leg, then you just put it in. You have them to push it in, yeah. turn, turn, and then you take it out, and then uh, you just uh, do the packaging for them. No problem. So maybe you can charge extra for that uh, consultation or anything. But of course, in uh, some certain clinics, if they are very busy, this is an easy way for you to uh, complete one whole testing. You can put them in a room. Don't need to, you know, don't need to, to, to talk to them while you're seeing. You can go and see other patients as well. So uh, it normally takes about like five minutes from the time where they watch the video and then you know they open the packaging and they think a while and then they open their pens about five minutes la, ten minutes like that mm. okay thank you no worries um any other questions from any other people uh maybe those people who have gotten your sample already is there any like a uh, question that you may maybe not sure how to perform or anything Okay, so, so far no questions. Uh, however, if you guys have any other question, you can just contact me. Uh, my, my number, if you guys want to take down, is 016-382-1226. So, uh, you can WhatsApp me if you have any burning question that you guys require. Of course, uh, from Dr. Azura and Nadia has my contact as well. So you uh, feel free to ask me anything. I'll be uh, supporting you all. So, um, so I think, uh, Bui, I think no more questions. No I more questions. Are, <laughs> I think yeah, yeah. we also coming to it, uh, you know. Um, yeah, you got. <laughs> yeah. Uh, early 2.54 and actually I got another online webinar after this ah. so <laughs> so thank you so much um, for the very the, uh, insightful uh, presentation of course if there are any requests from other doctors I think there's a lot of um, staff and doctors are not here yeah. because they're quite busy at the clinic mm. yeah so but never mind we have the recording yeah, mm. uh, this recording, please share with us so oh. we can share with the other doctors and staff of today's. And um, um, until next time, then thank you so much. Yes, so thank you, Dr. Azura, and everyone else for taking the time out of your day to listen to this talk. Of course, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. And uh, without further ado, I think I will end this meeting, yeah? So yes, yes. happy Friday and happy weekend to you all. Stay safe and happy Chinese New Year to those happy, who are celebrating. Yes. <laughs> nice weekend to you too and happy Chinese New Year. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, bye. thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks.